Uh, and Bob, I see you jumped on. Welcome. Um, Bob, John, Aisa, Mickey, this first part, probably going to be a little cloudy for you simply because you weren't here last week. Um, but I did promise Victor, Chris, Sal, and any of the others that uh, were out here, if they end up jumping on, we we're going to review some data because it's been almost, almost a week. Uh, it's two days shy uh, of a week since I ended the day on Thursday and I did the, the live dollar a day strategy right in front of you guys uh, on it. So do you guys actually want to see some of the results or no? Okay. Um, I was going to pull it up on the screen behind me, but I didn't have time to hook up my other microphone where I could move around. So you're going to have to give me a second. We'll, we'll share the screen over here. And then I'm going to shift into a slightly different topic today. It's something I wanted to get into last week. And unfortunately, we just ran out of time. So a lot of you, it's a bonus because I was going to talk about it last week with everybody here, but you're going to get to hear it today. Um, on here let me get this page opened up and brace yourself because the results are pretty uh pretty crazy all right let me share the screen so Victor, Sal, Chris, you guys know what I'm talking about, the dollar a day strategy leveraging on the business page. This first post you're seeing right here, this is the one that actually was running while you guys were here. It's the one that I, I think I showed some of the stats off of this on Thursday, right as Chris, Sal, you guys had to walk out. Um, and then we turn around and I live posted this one up here. But um, when we actually look at the results here, first off, you can see just, just here off the, the bat, right? 1,617 people were reached. There was a total of 24 different engagements off of this particular one. We're going to look at the data here, um, but you can see it reached 1.6 and there was a total through play of 366, uh, which means 366 of that 1.6, the 1,600 people watched the entire now it's 50 plus second, what, 58 seconds, 59 seconds. They watched all the way uh, through on that. Now, when we get into the, the deeper data on here, I'm used to doing it on the screen back there. So I got to, here it is, these people. So we can actually see across that time frame. Here's the different age categories. Now, remember, I think, Victor, you saw me do it. Chris, how you guys had to leave. I started noticing that a big bulk of the views on some of these were coming from this age category of 18 to 24. And for me, that's, that's not really the audience that I'm trying to get these type of pieces of content in front of, right? Not that there is an 18 to 24-year-old real estate individuals or small business owners out there. But it's just not the bread and butter that we know that we you know, like to work with. The majority of the people we're working with or the ideal clients for us are age 30 and above, right? And really, when we look at across our demographics, it's more high 30s, 38, 39, into the 40 range and over uh, from there, which kind of makes sense. We're dealing with a lot of technology, uh, and that's the age group that never really kind of figured it fully out, right, uh, on there. So... This, even though there were some good numbers on it, when I looked at it, the majority was this 18 to 24. And of that, it was 18 to 24 males, not even as many female side, which kind of makes sense. If they're in that age category, right? Knowing what we know about the real estate space, the majority of individuals 18 to 24 are going to be the young males, uh, not so much the young, younger females, right? Uh, on there. Placement, where did this get put the majority of the time? Hands down, it got placed in the Instagram feed. Now, you're probably sitting there shaking your head like, wait a minute, we've got Facebook shared here, but this thing's over here over on Instagram. Remember, uh, Victor, you saw it when I when I did it. Chris, Sal, I think you guys were still around when I talked about it. We tell it to go ahead and do it to both Instagram and Facebook. Well, guess what? Hands down, video views, where's it coming from? 
Instagram, Instagram. right? And I've been, I've talked about this like crazy um, over the last couple of years that video platforms like Instagram and even over onto the TikTok side, that's where the eyeballs are at, right? It's not so much the, the videos being played on, on the Facebook side. So Instagram feed and then Instagram stories behind that. Instagram reels was right behind that. Uh, and then it gets into the Facebook search result on mobile devices and some of the other stuff. Um, we can see here all the way down to um, just regular Facebook stories uh, and that kind of stuff, right? Not even so much in the Instagram Explorer. It was directly in the majority of these people's Instagram feeds, uh, which was where the bulk of it was coming from, right? Now, why is that important? Because if I'm going to put a video up, right? And I'm going for video views. I'm not necessarily going for the likes, comments, shares, love, saves, all that kind of crap. I really don't care about the vanity, what I call vanity metrics, right? But if I'm going to put this video up, I might encourage people at the end of the video, or maybe I tell Chamara, hey, put an end screen that comes across. My voice is still talking, but the last like two seconds or something, that's like, check out more info, link in bio, which is the Instagram strategy, Right because I'm seeing that Instagram is where the bulk of this is actually um, being viewed from. Now that's some of the, the metrics, right? I can look at locations, obviously a big bulk of it's California, but it was also Florida, Texas, New York, uh, Carolinas, Ohio, and then it starts to you know, dwindle down uh, to, the, to the different states that it had some of the lower views. The bulk of the views were coming from California, Florida, Texas, Kind of makes sense. Also, when I really look at this, where's the hot real estate markets? Where's the hot real estate stuff going on? Right. Remember, I targeted a lot of real estate related um, traits and real estate related um, the tags. I'm, I'm drawing a mind blank of um, the word that I'm looking for there, but these are the hot areas for it. Kind of makes sense that those are the profiles uh, that it also got put in front of. Okay. John, question. Um, you said that you got a lot of calls from the eight or hits from the 18 to 25, and that's not your market. Is there, I mean, is there some way to break down that and see like where they came from or what they're, you know, if they actually looked at the video or were they just floating around? Were they just, you know, surfing, so to oh. speak? I mean, again, remember the strategy with this was just, hey, I told Facebook, I want to optimize for video views. That's all I was going for was get more people watching right. it. That's what I wanted Facebook to focus on. So it was going to put it in front of platforms or, or outlets, right? In the Facebook, Instagram compilation of, of assets that it could put it out there in and put it in front of profiles that they know typically watch video, right? Okay. Now, it, again, it was 18 to 24, but that was because I forgot to change my age group, right? My age demographics, which you'll see the difference in the one that I posted right after this one um, on there where we changed it. Now, these are some of the interests that I used, right? Here's that age group, 18 to 65. I meant to change that and we didn't. But here were some of the interests that these were in front of people with creative real estate investing, marketing, real estate investment clubs, investment strategy, real estate investing, real estate investor. Real property, Zillow, or fixer uppers. That was the audience that I built um, and put this in front of. They they show these type of interests. These are the type of profiles they follow. These are the type of um, profiles that they they engage with and follow on. Um, now I can tell you that during this this same time frame that this was running, if I look at Instagram met metrics, I was actually gaining some Instagram followers. Again, that's a vanity metric. I really don't care how many followers. It wasn't going for follower growth. But it makes sense when I go back and look at it, that the bulk of this was coming in Instagram feeds and suddenly I was gaining some, some Instagram traffic, right? Instagram followers to my profile uh, and, and viewership of my profile was up during the same time when I put the two stats side by side. Now, why is this the strategy? Why is this something I was teaching you guys uh, last week? If you notice, all I spent was $7 on that total uh, budget. But if we really break it down, uh, and this one, where is it gonna show me the full details? Uh, right here. Of that $7 over the seven days, it only cost me two cents a through play. So to, to get these 366 people to watch it, it only cost me two cents per person, right? 
you couldn't package this up on a CD and mail it to somebody for two cents. I, I can't get that kind of traction or that kind of viewership through email or through just posting something one time to my YouTube channel and letting it sit with no, no notification around it, right? Remember, we're buying the eyeballs, but I'm being specific with Facebook when doing these, these campaigns on what I'm trying to, to gain. And at this point, all I'm focusing on is what type of, of marketing. Let's see if Chris, Sal, Victor, if you guys remember, where am I at in the customer journey? What am I focusing on? Awareness. Awareness. That's it. I was just trying to build awareness, right? If we watched the actual video clip itself of what I was actually saying, I believe this one was just talking about buy boxes, right? It was a video clip from one of these type of calls here that Chamara took, chopped up. And um, I'm talking about the buy box. Hey, when we were going after rental properties, here's the type of stuff that we, we looked for, right? I'm just trying to bring awareness that this guy, Sean Tiberio, this profile knows some real estate stuff. And I'm putting it in front of people who are interested in real estate. Why? To get me on their radar. That was solely the, go the job of it. And I was willing to give $7 to buy the eyeballs. Would you guys call this right here a success? Absolutely. It did its job, right? It brought awareness to it. Now, that's cool. But if I never try to take it to the next level and do more behind that, then all we're doing is just buying traffic and there's no real result behind that. But for the purpose of what I was using it for to teach you guys something and gain some awareness around it, I call that one a success, right? Now, the one that I did last Thursday in the room, right? As you, literally, Chris Sal was like, right as you guys were walking out, we were building this one out. This one still has uh, three days to go, it has today, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday before this one is over. And you can see this one's not near as much. There's 417 total profiles. The bot traffic's 364. The through plays are 167. So far, the percentage, even though the number of eyeballs are down in comparison, is the percentage of watch higher. Yeah, more of the, more of the profiles it's been in front of have watched it compared to even though this hit 1.6, it only had 366 through plays. So the percentage is lower here than it is here. And when we dig deep into the results, currently right now, I'm at a three cents. The other one was two. Right now I'm at a three cent per through play. Oh, heaven forbid, I'm up a penny, right? <laughs> Are we still okay with paying three cents to get somebody to watch a video, right? Now, when we start to break down the stats here, people notice there's no 18 to 24 now. Why? When I built the campaign, we said 29 to 65. So even though that other one was up way more viewership, where was the bulk of the viewership coming from? The age demographic I didn't want anyway, right? Taking that age demographic out, I'm dropping the amount of eyeballs, but I'm actually seeing a higher percentage of through plays and look at the age group that's leading the way right now that has been watching this video the bulk of the time and notice male female where's it at now do you have it built out as the same people who watch or is that the ex exact same hashtags you'll see here in a second okay this one though is a lot higher on the women right over men 56 to 43 percent but it's 65 and older female, right? Now placement, where's it been? This one's actually been Instagram articles, mobile in-stream videos, Facebook search results, but still back here to this Instagram uh, article feed. Well, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Facebook decided to put it here the bulk of the time. That's where they felt that particular video based on the demographics and the interests that I told it, this is where it should be at. Now, this one we're running for $8 for eight days instead of $7 for seven days. No big deal. Still the goal is the same. Get more video views. And the location, Texas, California, Florida, New York, still the same states at the top, right? 
interests, pretty much the same interests, real estate investing trust, real estate investment associations, digital marketing, creative real estate investing, marketing, uh, real estate investment clubs, truly investment strategy, social media marketing, real estate investing, real estate investor, real, real property, Zillow, fixer upper, so on and so forth, right? And as of right now, I've only spent $4.52 of the budget um, to get three cents of through play and the reach of 364 with 167 people actually um, watching it. And we still got a couple of days left in this one to shake it out. But is this another successful awareness building? marketing post. And here's the thing. I'm going to post that post regardless, right? That post was going to go to my, my feeds, part of that whole content factory that we talked about last week. It's, it was going to go there anyway. But if I just put it out there and don't put anything behind it, what's the viewership of that going to be? Well, let's take a look. I put this one up yesterday, yesterday or the day before, one of the two. This one right here. This one went up on May 12th. So actually this one went up the other, uh, the same day that you guys were leaving. Um, right? Yeah, 10, 11, 12. You guys left on that same day. This one went up, but I didn't do anything behind it, right? Same, same type of video. This one here I'm talking about, um, this one's actually talking about, Hey, if you have X number of leads coming in, how many deals that, that whole talk around our closing percentage and how many leads do you need to generate and all that stuff. Right. This one here, same style video, right? It's obviously me teaching something. This one I'm teaching a little bit about the buyer journey, multimedia, multi-message and having different messages at different points along the way. But notice I didn't put anything behind it. I didn't boost it. Didn't tell, you know, Facebook, here's a little bit of money. Let me give you a little gas to get this thing going and look at the reach difference. 33 reach, even though this page has 1,100 people that like it and 1,248 people that follow it. So it's not even getting into the feed organically of every person that likes and follows the page. This has been the big change with Facebook over the last couple of years. Used to be, if you liked the Facebook page, if they put out content, it would show up in your feed. Not so much anymore. Now, I, I emphasize that because a lot of times we hear, hey, I'm trying to post on Facebook. That's a strategy. I'm using Facebook to try to get opportunities. And I've been putting posts out on it, or I'm so worried about my social media postings, but I'm not getting any traction out of it. Well, you guys can see it right there. Even a, a profile and this, you know, this page has some decent following slash likes to it. Even that alone can't get it in front of enough eyeballs, right? So we go back to the purpose of awareness marketing is to simply gain attention. That's it. Get somebody to start recognizing us, the name, company name. Or like I talked a lot, a lot last week, towards the end of the time, Victor, Chris, Sal, we started talking about you are your brand. They need to be recognizing you and associating you to the brands, right? Not just the brand or not just a company name. Does that make sense? Any thoughts, comments, questions? Mainly Victor, Sal, Chris, anything? Um, you know, notice this one here. This is Victor actually giving a, a shout out and I shared it. I, he tagged me and I shared it over, right? And even that, only 22 people. Thoughts, comments, questions on that? I found it. I, I thought it was interesting that you adjusted the, the age group, but yet you got a higher percentage of people looking through it because they were more interested. So that falls back to what you were talking about, that that 18 to 25 group might have just been their normal process of, you know, looking at videos. But you got people who were a bunch more interested on the other one. I think it's the platform, too, because it went to a different platform. Well, it's still on Instagram. It's just in a different 
outlet of Instagram, right? Instagram's got multiple different um, aspects to it, just like Facebook's got multiple different outlets inside of it. Um, but we're telling Facebook, hey, I want here's what I want you to optimize to. And based on what it starts getting traction in, it's going to keep it there. So, Sean, you in, in just for the people that weren't there last week, the interesting thing was Sean was not asking for a next step in these videos. He wasn't asking for an opt in. He wasn't asking for anything. He just put, put it out there, which is totally different than our mindset. You know, we always want someone to check in, but he was just looking, he was just throwing it out there. And obviously uh, it's working pretty good. So I love that. And uh, I've used it in the past for open houses for our properties. And really when, especially for the location, like if you put, you specify just that location, you have a lot of viewers. Um, for the property. And so I do think that for real estate, it works wonderfully for the awareness space. You just have the word out. Like it's, you know, you get your ROI very good. Locally, I mean, it, again, I'm, I'm trying to target the whole country with, with our stuff, right? But locally, we start to hone this down. Absolutely, right? This was the other one. Victor, Chris, Al, um, that we, we talked about, right? I boosted it again, actually. Uh, but notice this one has a, has a step to it, right? It's taking them somewhere else. This one's me promoting the, the lead magnet, our digital marketing checklist. Now, this one was boosted on May 10th. It's already completed now. Uh, this was the, the last results. But remember, I told you guys I boosted it a second time because remember back on March 29th, we got it in front of 341 people and 21 people clicked the link to go over and get the checklist. Well, 266 and another 19 went over there to get it. And the cost on that one was, it cost me 36 cents to get people over to this, this lead magnet. And again, this one had that 18 to 24 in there. But this one was actually mobile in-stream video. So it was more on the mobile side where the engagement was coming from. But based on what I'm seeing here, seven bucks cost me 36 cents to get these 19 people to click over to it. And I really only spent $6.93. I didn't even spend the whole $7. Thank you, Facebook. You didn't take all my money. But after two successful runs of that particular post just putting a little gas on it where'd it go it's down here somewhere right here after two successful runs 21 people 19 people chris victor sal i told you guys last week what was my plan with this now that's your your lead magnet yeah but what was my plan after the second run of this if it got decent re results or right around that same result line, what was I going to do next? Run it again. But I was going to run it again, but not just as a boosted post, but as a what? I don't recall. As a consistent ad. Mm -hmm. An ad with a budget per day and just let it run for a while. Not just yeah, a the, boosted post, right? Yeah, the, the return on investment there is astronomical, so... I'll reshoot the video. I'll rewrite some of the creative and we'll actually launch this as an actual, as an actual ad on Facebook and Instagram with more of like a five or $10 a day budget, get it in front of more people. Because obviously when it gets in front of people, I can get the click throughs, right? There's interest in that. Now, if I ran this and it got in front of 266 people and I had two people click the link, Right. And I was pretty solid on everything else that I did. I knew I put it in front of the right audience with the right interests and only two people clicked it. Then it's probably because it's not intriguing enough. I think the checklist is interesting, but they don't think it's interesting enough to go and want to get it. Right. But this shows me that there is interest. I can get people to it. 
the other funny thing is, is when you click the learn more, here's all it did. Took them right to the homepage where this other video was at and where the, the button for it was at. Well, now that I know I can get people to it, what do you think is going to change here? Is it going to come to this page? Or is it going to go to something better? Something better. Something different. What do you think is going to be different? I don't know. I'd say more of a call to action. Get them maybe to a page where you have more services. I'm take them to Please magnet. I'm going to take them directly to this page. And now it's time to go all in on updating this page. And following a very similar process to what I talked to you guys about last week out here, leveraging some video and guess what type of video is probably going to be on there, right? Some kind of an interactive video that's going to be on there. That's also going to give them the, the option to get this, but it's also going to start to try to drive them to a call, right? Because now at this point, I'm putting some bigger money behind it. I'm actually not just trying to get you to download a checklist. I also want to see if I can get somebody who's hot and ready to get on a call, right? So I'm going to take them to more of a page like this one that's got a little bit deeper video about the process, that's got an ability to book a calendar, that's got more information on it, right? It's got some testimonials in there, all the, all the components to that page. Does that make sense? So I used the boosted this dollar a day that I learned from Dennis Yu at uh, one of our big masterminds. I'm using that as kind of the playground, right? I'm over here playing on the, the playground for a second and seeing who, who likes what I've got. And if, they, if there's enough people that are liking it, okay, I can go and put a little bit more money behind it, right? And I'll pay for the clicks. That's PPC, pay-per-click. So I'll pay to get those clicks because those clicks, if I'm paying for it, Facebook wants me to keep paying for it. Google, if I run the same type of ad on Google as a Google ad, Google wants me to keep paying. Facebook wants me to keep paying, which means they're going to make sure that they're optimizing it for what I'm saying. And in this case, I'd be telling Facebook, I want you to make sure it gets in front of people that are known profiles to click and go view things when they get ads put in front of them. And yes, this is the level of data that Facebook has on every one of their profiles. They know that if Mickey watches something at 2.30 in the morning, here's her typical behavior. Or if Chris is looking at something at 6 a.m., here's his typical behavior. And they will try to make sure that they put that in front of that type of profile at that time if that's the result that I'm asking for. Thoughts, comments, questions on this before we shift. Not yeah, shifting too much. We're staying on the topic of social media today, but uh, I'm going to shift away from data here. You got something, Chris? Yes, I do have a question, and it is data. <laughs> um, with the Facebook boost, is there a number we should aim for? Is there a percentage that we should really aim for to know to be able to boost it again? And then to what? How do we know if it's successful enough to continue putting pressure with it? Rule of thumb would be, depending on what you're going for, right? So if I'm playing on the video views, I want to see at least a 5 to 10% conversion. So 5 to 10% of the people that it got in front of, watch it. So that through play needs to be about that 5 to 10% range, okay? If it's, in the case of that checklist, I'm driving them off, right? Facebook really doesn't want people leaving the platform. However, I'm giving them money, which is why they're willing to go ahead and put that in front of people and allow people to click off. This is why I tell you guys, organically, never post a freaking link in anything because the second that you do it, it crushes it. Matter of fact, I got into a whole discussion with somebody who's trying to talk social media tips the other day. And this was what she said was, hey, just put the link to your blogs and put the link to your lead magnets right in the post and encourage people to go get it. And when I went and looked at her profile and took screenshots of the last seven times she did that, she had zero, zero interaction, not a single comment, not a single like. It, you can tell that thing was dead in the water and other posts of hers were doing good. 
she would post something that was just more educational or more thought provoking. She'd get people commenting and, and liking and sharing and these type of things. The second she posted something with a link, it died. So it's not that the person's content sucked. It's what? Facebook crushed it, right? Facebook would not allow that post to go out because organically you're putting a link asking somebody to leave the platform and Facebook says, no, not going to do that. So the better strategy is, and I, I, this person actually asked what would be the better strategy. I sent them a screenshot of when I did my book launch and I said, Hey, I got copies of it. Who would like a copy of this thing? I didn't say click the link in the, in the, you know, click this link here, blah, 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 and go get the book for $5 shipping. I just said, Hey, who would like it? And I got all kinds of people. I had so much engagement. I had, I don't know, 50, 60 different uh, likes and comments and everything else and messages coming in like crazy. Why? There was no link. Facebook kept pushing that thing out. <laughs> there was a lot of interaction on it. And there's a whole other strategy behind how to boost your interaction once you start getting it. But had I put a link in it, it would have crushed it, right? So Chris, when you're boosting a post with money and you've got a link in it, Facebook will put it there, but our conversion rate's going to be down. So if I'm seeing three to 5%, conversion, then I know it's working pretty well. Especially because three to 5% when I'm only spending seven to 10 bucks over a seven to 10 day window. Remember, I'm using this as the, the testing ground, the playground. If I can get three to 5% off of $7 over seven days, a dollar a day, then I think I'm onto something. Now I'll go take that same camp, that same thing. In my case, I'll re-record re, uh, re the video because I wasn't too happy with the video, but I just wanted to put it up and see what happened. I'll reshoot the video, rewrite the creative, launch it as its own full-blown ad, not just a boosted post. There is a big difference there. And I'll put a little bit more gas on it. I'll tell Facebook, hey, let's go ahead and run this sucker for 30 days. And I'm willing to spend 100 bucks over 30 days or 150 bucks over 30 days. Or in the case of like a TikTok, uh, campaign that we tested with Access Home Buyers. I went ahead and dumped 500 bucks into a campaign on TikTok for real estate ads and real estate leads and ended up with four solid leads off of TikTok on 500 bucks. Well, how many of you guys have spent $500 on direct mail and got four solid leads? Right? It's hard, <laughs> but I had four solid leads, two of which I could have made something happen out of if I tried hard enough. Two deals that probably could have come off of that 500 bucks. But again, you're giving the platform money. They're going to be willing to put that in front of people and let them come off of the platform. Does that make sense? My suggestion, Chris, though, is I would not do anything for a little while. I'd, I'd boost the, think of it as an authority space. I would boost some authority and some awareness around your profile for a little while before you go asking somebody to do something. So your first handful of boosted posts, I would go all off of views. This is why, Victor, I said video, right? Just get it on video, get it boosted, seven bucks, seven days, do this for three, four, five different ones, get it in front of a lot of eyeballs, hyper focus on your local area. I'm not going, you know, local here. You aren't going to select United States as the region. You're going to select Houston, Texas. And you're going to select this age group in Houston, Texas. And the people in Houston, Texas, in this age group that have these type of interests. That's why we go back to the customer avatar sheet. Why is that so important? It's the baseline of all of this, right? And then we just got to let the, the data shake out. And sometimes we think we nail it. And the data tells us, nope, something was off. The creative was off, right? The video was off, whatever the case. John, is there any way, um, I was playing a little bit with this over the weekend and I was trying to, I was trying to get some specific uh, categories for the, to, to put in. And it just, it kind of gave me some standard stuff. Is there a way to customize that? Those are Facebook's okay. categories. Right. Gotcha. You got to come. That's you got to use based on what they've got. Okay, that's what I figured. Thank you. Okay. Now, the big topic that I want to hit today, and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to hit on it, 
and then it's going to be really up to you guys to take the action on it. Why is it okay for me to go ahead and throw a couple bucks at something and only go after video views or only after kind of um, visibility, right? Awareness side and not worry too much about, well, what if I could have gotten them somewhere else? It's because my profiles are optimized. It's because if they start to see me enough and they start clicking on and they get to my profiles, there's other things in my profiles on Facebook and Instagram that can capture them, right? It can keep them around. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you guys. How many of you guys feel like if I just went to your personal profile, it's really clear who and what you are? You know, I'll share the screen here. This is my personal profile on Facebook. Is there any confusion about Sean just from the, the time they land there, right? As they start to scroll through and they see this. Now on mobile, this looks completely different, which is where the bulk of people are are in engaging and entertaining at, right? But it's pretty clear who and what Sean is, right? And this is just my personal profile. Well, why is that important? Because REI Toolbox is, is out there. Top results is out there. There's things being put out there, but who's the face of these companies? Me. So Sean, don't you have another uh, Facebook personal page. I think that's what you mentioned. Yeah. So you have a personal, personal Facebook page. That's my personal. This is my personal Facebook page that you have to friend. Right. And then I have the Sean Tiberio page, which is where I've been doing all these boosted posts off of because that's okay. what we need. But same thing you get here, Sean author. Now, currently I have this Unleash Your Inner Lion highlight video, but I could change that to something REI. Right. And same thing as you kind of go through the, the profile of stuff, you start seeing about Sean, it's linking to my website, right? These type of things. Well, what about Instagram? So Sean, I remember when it was like black and red for the TRC, um, what made you switch, you know, like deciding to go more with area toolbox right now compared to TRC? Because that's the big brand that we're pushing at the moment. Okay. That's it. Why is it? There it goes. All right. Just like on Instagram. Somebody gets to this profile. Is there any confusion on who Sean is and what Sean does? I was a little nervous there uh, to, to open up Instagram and I was afraid I was going to have Marie's. Instagram feed pop up with every time there's no fail. It's bouncing boobs and butts. Why? <laughs> they think, think you uh, like to look quit engaging on those posts. They'll stop showing up. I have never engaged on one of those posts, <laughs> but I mean, right here, right? The second they get onto to Instagram, I'm calling it right out. This is actually a new feature Instagram just came out with not too long ago. I just updated this. You used to not be able to get this many characters on your headline. It used to say Sean Tiberio, and then it was like entrepreneur or author or real estate. And that was about as far as I could get. Well, they just changed it to where you could get, you have unlimited up here now. So I changed it to real estate investing marketing expert, right? And as we go through the feed, Notice it's not Sean and all the food that he's out eating. It's what? All the marketing stuff. Yeah. All marketing stuff. It's all Sean doing what Sean says Sean does on here, right? And you can tell that the strategy has changed over the time, the, the different style videos, the, you know, whatnot, different components. But at the end of the day, it, it's like, this is Sean. You know, there are some things of, you know, DNA and I, but I don't post a lot of that stuff 
to Instagram. Why? Because it's it's business. It's the only reason I'm using it. It's business. Same thing over on Facebook. The author page that I call it, right? My professional page, but even my personal profile. Reason why is when you're engaging in groups, when I'm in these different groups throughout the course of the week, right? I'm in there commenting on stuff, talking about stuff, whatever the case, getting involved in discussions. At some point, that, that's an awareness strategy as well. And at some point, somebody's going to be intrigued. Who's this Sean guy? Who's this John May guy? Who's this Chris? Who's Mickey, right? Who's Seagal? You keep seeing him in here. Who is this? They're going to eventually click on the profile. And when they get there, what are they going to see? Are they going to see Sal in his mob gangster, you know, suit and uh, holding a body with a brick off of it? Or are they going to, you know, see Sal in his monkey suit looking like he's helping somebody in probate because he claims he's a probate expert in Houston? Are they going to see Victor and his dinner from last night? And that's all they're going to see when they scroll through? Or are they going to see Victor and his family and his kids with his wife and talking real estate stuff and his video homes branding and his real estate agent branding stuff in there and, and really be able to connect the dots right away? Oh, Victor, he's a family guy and he's all, it looks like he's, he does a lot in the real estate world. Now, Chris, everybody was a little upset that they didn't get to hear your funnel last week but uh i can almost guess the early stages of the funnel came down to just the look if there wasn't the right look they weren't making it to the next stage correct and if date one happened and something didn't look the way you wanted it to look they probably didn't make it to date two of the funnel right same's true here. You guys are in business. Image is everything. It's not the only thing, but it is a big part of it. So Marie, Chris, Sal, Victor, this was the one thing that we did not get into last week. We just ran out of time focusing on other stuff, partially because it was like uh, babysitting five-year-olds on one of the days. <laughs> you mean the day after we were at the bar? Uh, I, mean, I won't say what day, but just one of those days, there was a lot of work to get you guys to do one thing. <laughs> so we just didn't get into it, but that was the one thing that I really wanted to do was have you sit down and clean up your profiles. So, so Sean, a question. Go for so, it. So now you change your whole personal now, like when you're running two different businesses, right? So which business do you put up there? You know, you put, like now you're putting the toolbox, not the TRC, right? But what about the TRC? Where is that gone to? It's, it's still around. It's just not a big focus for us right now. REI Toolbox is the big brand at the moment. It's the big push. It's, the, it's our niche. It's the focus area. TRC still exists. It's out there. The, the goal for TRC and what we're doing with TRC is completely different. That's all. So we don't. Um, the really, only reason I've got a lot of REI toolbox stuff out there right now is I just put the book out. So we don't really need the business page as much because we're doing all the advertising on the personal. Is that what no, you The business page is still useful, right? We still have REI toolbox pages out there. We still have top results pages out there. There's still content hitting those on a daily basis. But at the end of the day, who is the brand? Who's the one really making all the connections and making business happen? Are people going to REI Toolbox's Facebook or Instagram page and messaging us there? Or are they realizing REI Toolbox can help me and Sean's the guy I need to talk to? Right? It's, it's the latter. Hey, REI Toolbox, I keep seeing this brand out there. I've, I've heard about it. I hear other people talking about it. I go look it up. Oh, okay. I see what that is. Oh, it's, it's Sean and Roger. And they get to Sean's page. Now, don't look at Roger's page. Roger's the developer in the back end. He's like the mechanic with the ugly car. Uh, trying to get Roger to use Instagram is like trying to get Sal to stop using an encyclopedia. So 
Sean, do you still post the videos on your business page and then share it to your um, personal page or do you- I don't share them. You don't I don't share, share them. them. I organically post to all these platforms, all these accounts. Now I'm not doing all of it, right? Obviously I've got a team right now, Erica and it's L, they handle posting on a daily basis to REI toolbox on Facebook and on Instagram and TRC on Facebook and Instagram and that kind of stuff. But I post my own stuff to my, my accounts. And sometimes I'll see something that they posted over there and I'll snag that same image and I'll go use it on mine. <clears throat> same thing on TikTok, right? We've got a TRC or a, an REI toolbox TikTok channel, but I've got a Sean Tiberio TikTok channel. And a lot of the same posts that I'm posting on Instagram, I turn around and use that same post and I post it over on TikTok. I don't share them or link them together or any of that. It's all natively posted. You know, LinkedIn, a little different strategy. I post more around blog topics. It's not so much video share, it's more content. So Sean, uh, for, for those of us that have been, which is probably most of us, that have been using our Facebook page, personal Facebook page as a true personal Facebook page. And uh, he, Chris is smiling because he's been telling me this for, for about two years now. You know, how do we, how do, do we simply transition that the, what we're putting in there into a business oriented thing? Or is there a way to build, to, to go backwards? What, go back and delete all the old stuff, you mean? No, just leave all that. That's fine. Just start making the change. And you'll okay. see. I mean, occasionally I do post some just very personal things. Why? I'm a human. And, and the personal human touch needs to come in from time to time. One of the things okay. that attract a lot of people uh, to us or to me is some of the, you know, crazy crap that I do. The, the endurance stuff. Right. There was a while there where I was super involved in triathlons and I'd post stuff about my workout, but then I'd turn around the very next post. I'd be posting about how I'm traveling to go speak at such and such group, or I'm over here doing this, or we had this real estate deal happening over here. Right. It's the same thing today. I post a lot of business stuff, but I also post a lot of random personalized stuff here and there. Okay. Sometimes I'll intentionally post something. I notice that, hey, some, some interactiveness is lagging at the moment, right? It's been kind of steady across the board. So I'll post something thought-provoking. I'll post something that I know is going to, you know, tick some people off, but it's going to get people to engage a little bit. Or you do the opposite. I know if I post something super happy and fun, right? If, let's say, uh, well, that she's not on, Liz, right? Marie, Liz, Liz's daughter just graduated. I've seen Liz post more on social media in the last like two or three days because her daughter is graduating than I've seen her post in, I don't know, five years. Not that she never posted before. It's just she's posting way more now because why? She's excited and happy about her kid. Well, I've seen way more engagement on her stuff because of that too. That has nothing to do with business, but it's bringing it back to show that Liz is a family-oriented individual and she's got a daughter and she cares about her daughter. And when those type of things show through, right, at the end of the day, people do business with people, not businesses. Nobody's doing business with you because your logo looks amazing. Nobody's doing business with you because your name of your company sounds awesome. They're doing business with you because they got on a call with Chris or Sal or Victor or Marie or John, and they had a connection. They felt comfortable. They liked something. They saw something about your brand, and they liked that. They saw something about you and your brand and they like that. Does that make sense? So Sal, I would just start posting. Now I've had family tell me, I don't want to see all that crap. I'm only, I follow you on Facebook because I want to stay up to date with what you got going on. I wish you'd post more of that stuff. I tell them that's fine. You got my phone number. Call me. <laughs> Social media as a business owner, is a business tool. Now, if you really, really, really want a profile that's, you know, a place for you to post all the happy picture of kids and the food that you had last night, go create another personal page and tell all your, your family to go friend that page over there and that's it. 
That's just my take. Does that make sense? Makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. But guess what? Right now, if you started posting some business stuff on there, your family's going to be the little fire that helps it get going because they're, you know, my grandmother mm -hmm. that comments and likes every freaking thing three times. She's and buying. thinks that it's a new email every time she sees it. It's like, Grandma, that's the same post that got posted last Thursday that you keep commenting on. But I got your email the other day, Sean. But you know what? Grandma liking that thing and commenting on it in the first two minutes that it was out there kicks it, gets it going, right? That's why I still comment back to her. <laughs> That's why I do the random strategies too. When I notice even a lot of you guys, you'll like something, right? You'll engage with it through a like, a, a heart or something like that, but you don't comment. And what do I do? I put a comment and I tag you in it. And I go, hey, Chris, what's your thoughts? Hey, I'd love to hear from Chris, John, Mickey, Victor. Love to hear from you guys. Why do I do that? I'm, in, I'm manufacturing the engagement making you engage to get traction on something. All good? Oh boy, something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, marketing is marketing is way more than just sending a text message campaign or sending a direct mail campaign or putting a blog out a week. Marketing is a lot of action happening a lot of the hours of the day and basically casting the biggest net that you can cast and then slowly moving that person. And I, when I say slowly, it doesn't mean it needs to be months. You know, I had somebody comment the other day and immediately I, I, ah, this person's an avatar. They commented on a post immediately just went to a question. How's life? How's business? Oh, well, this is going on. I'd love to talk to you because we could help with just that. Took it over to the direct message. We've been chatting over there and this person wasn't a prospect prior to that. But I got a big enough net to catch their attention and I can wheel them in now slowly wheeling them in. I didn't comment back with, Hey dude, you should sign up for our, our service. Hey, you should sell me your house. Hey, we should get married tomorrow. And I didn't say that. I said, Hey Victor, how's life? How's business? All right. Let's have a conversation. Let's drink some coffee together and see if we actually want to go on a date. Now, for some of us, the personal focused profile, the, the personal brand, right, really dialing it in is going to mean more for some of us on this call more so than the other ones. You know, Mickey, Aisa, what you guys are trying to do with the uh, on the NLP side with the kids and that kind of stuff, that, that's going to that needs to be way more dialed in than somebody like Chris, Sal, Victor, John, Seagal, who are just focusing on more, you know, Bob and these type of, that are just focusing on kind of the real estate. You can get away with not having as much. You know, M Michelle Woker down there in the corner, you know, wanting to go into financial literacy for kids and teach and be, be looked at as the person to teach children these type of concepts. Well, if, if they get over there and, the, and your profile is all over the place online, don't speak that. It's really hard for a family to trust that, right? And you guys laugh, but. A couple of you guys, Victor, Sal, Chris, um, and Michelle Woker pieces screw me up as I look <laughs> at uh, the screen. You got to change that and stop lo logging in as Michelle Woker. You're frozen, Marie. But uh, you guys know I'm doing that stuff with the Boys and Girls Club. When I had to fill the application, out, even though they asked me to do it, I still had to fill an application out and go through a background check. And part of that background check and application was I had to put social media profiles on there. 
Why? Because I'm in front of these kids. And you think these kids aren't going to go and look me up on social media? 100% they are. Uh Uh-oh. And they wanted to make sure that, yes, what Giovanni, that you guys met, what Giovanni knows of Sean through Kiwanis and everything else that he does, he's a great guy, and I really want him to, to be part of this program. But I don't know what he's saying over here on social platforms. He could be over there saying, like, he hates everybody and wants them all dead and whatever. Well, that's not what they want in front of the kids. So, yes, even though they might not say anything, I guarantee people are looking you up. At some point, somebody's looking at you online. Go ahead, Google Bob Kane and see what you get. Well, there's, there is the extreme on the other side, Bob. If you don't exist, you might think that's slick. Nope, not at all. It has nothing to do with it. Just No, I'm just using that as the example, right? You might not exist because you think that's slick. Hey, I just hide it all. Nobody can see me, and I don't have any of these type of accounts out there. But does that spur another thought? Especially when we're dealing with people in their homes and these type of things. Especially now, there's so much spam. It just uh, shows you're another spammer because you can't find him. Well, the creator of Batman is also Bob Kane, so... Well, that's a whole, lot of, a whole lot of other stuff on top of mine. But I was using that as an example is all right. We don't want to go the opposite extreme where it's like, okay, well, I'll just, I won't have any of it out there. Then I played safe. Well, that, that hurts you just as much. Sound good. Okay. Just a reminder tomorrow training is lead vault day. Thursday is going to be with Roger. 